I'm going to have my notes here because as a student teacher, everything resolves on... I can't even talk. Well done, me. Everything resolves around lesson plans with me, apparently. So I'm Eleanor. I'm 21. I'm a student in Cardiff, like we all love Cardiff. Um, as someone with a chronic bladder condition, I used to joke that my autobiography would be called This Takes the Piss. Even though this is my story, please don't think I'm the only person who had something like this happen to them. One in seven of our young people today have a chronic medical condition. That's 15%. I wouldn't look any different out of a crowd, would I? If you saw me out in time, like those pictures, go on Life Lounge. <laughs> I've been battling a chronic condition since I was 15 years old. I take more injections, more medication, I've had more surgeries than Kim Kardashian. I've got none of the booty to show for it. So, let me take you back to when I was a little girl. I grew up on the border of Wales, attending the same amazing primary school as my little sister. Those teachers were amazing. I was in and out of hospitals probably at least twice a year due to operations, infections, and they never made me feel like I was different. I was a high achiever, and their diligence and their respect to me and my family is what got me going. When I first got ill, I was attending one of the best schools in Northern Ireland. Look, wasn't I cute? <laughs> Our schools are not prepared, or maybe they're not educated enough, on how these invisible illnesses can actually affect their pupils. The average secondary school class in the UK has 21 students. So, on average, three of those students have a chronic medical condition. So, this is a picture coming up of all the girls in my year nine class. There was 21 of us, so on average, me plus two others have a chronic condition. Our British schools have a lack of expertise on how to intervene early in these pupils. Just today, the House of Commons released a document letting us know that they too think that we have a lack of expertise on how to intervene early to, for these special needs children. So, by the time I was 17, I was already bedbound due to my health and couldn't attend college. I, like many others there, was heartbroken at the idea of not going on to gain my qualifications in university. So while researching options, the idea of online distance learning came up. I could learn from home, in bed or hospital, through my laptop and through textbooks, and learn around my health. So my classroom quickly became my laptop, and I became my own teacher. Through hard work and perseverance, a lot of friends reruns, and probably enough crisps to fuel walkers, I got my A-levels and came to university. When I went to school and I moved back from Ireland to England in 2013, I came to the local comp as everyone does. My first week, we had a meeting with the head teacher who, me along with my mum, just wanted to meet us and say hello. So the first thing I wasn't expecting to hear was, are you sure you can do this? We had a girl like you last year and she lasted three days. This stigma is what ruins relationships and confidence between home and school of those with chronic conditions. I personally asked over 500 students from online chronic communities, which I totally recommend, they're amazing, what they wish their schools had more of in regards to their health and what they could do. There's six things that came up. Keep going. I, I did just take them for Instagram, I promise. <laughs> Barriers to education for those with not just chronic health conditions are not just in the curriculum. We need to identify the individual needs of every pupil as every health journey is different. Educators and schools need to be flexible, understanding, and kind. You cannot expect 95% attendance from a child with chronic fatigue, or you cannot expect the child with chronic pain to do a full school day. One of my favorite things about education is the overarching push for improvement within it. I'm part of everyone. Just like medicine and our amazing NHS, education is always changing. There are bills coming in right now in Wales, like the Donaldson Bill and the new ALN Bill, which are going to change education to be a more holistic environment. Personally, I believe my journey has taught me a lot. I've learned so many exciting things. I'm becoming a teacher myself about what's happening with pupils like I once was. Before I end here today, I just want to show you how these illnesses can be truly invisible. According to the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, 96% of chronic health conditions are said to be invisible. You wouldn't be able to tell unless I told you that I have something like chronic pain. A smile can hide so many things. Mental or physical health can be hidden and you wouldn't even know it. So always be kind. 15 years ago, the idea of me in my bedroom learning my A-levels 
property would be absolutely insane. So, but look at the success of it now. I wasn't the only person doing this. I could probably tell you at least 20 more in my year alone that I know of. But to summarize with you today, I want to say education must always be adaptable. Educators must always be kind and flexible and open-minded. And the curriculum must be always open to be flexible. The education must never, ever be conditional on health. Thank you.